Welcome back to the Infinite Life podcast. And today on the podcast, we have a very special guest with us, Wajid Hassan. Wajid, welcome to the podcast. Hey, Katish, nice to see you. Great to be on your show. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, we are going to have a fascinating discussion today, and Wajid is here to talk about his experience with understanding his soul's journey over time and the messages that he has to impart to us that he thinks are important for us to understand um, and, I guess, help us with our humanness. He's written a, a fascinating book, which for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, you can see it on screen now. Um, and for those of you who are listening to the podcast, it's called The Struggle for World Sanity. A Muslim-born yogi mystic reveals a practical solution to solve all problems facing humanity. So, Ajid, you have a very interesting past. So, um, I'm just going to read the little bio and then you can tell us a bit about yourself. So, in the book, um, Wajid tells us, from Pakistan to England, and then settling in America, Wajid has lived an interesting and varied life in many fields of endeavor. From a technical background as a field service engineer to a stand-up comedian with over 20 years as a union actor doing voiceover, narration, commercials, as well as TV and movie real roles. He also encompasses over 40 years experience in the field of metaphysics, healing, spirituality, and new age concepts. An avid hiker, he managed to, to climb to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro in 2006. And he's a humanitarian and environmentalist, always looking for ways to improve life for people along with a deep love for our planet and all the plants and animals who reside upon her back. So Wajid, lots in there to talk about. Where do you think you'd like to start? Would you like to start with the interesting situation where you were born into a Muslim family, yet you've had a much more mystical and metaphysical experience in life. So that's not your average Muslim's experience, is it? Uh, not really, no. So it's for me, uh, um, I, I'm a firm believer in reincarnation. Um, I think it's a truth that the whole world, uh, you know, needs to know about. It's a truth that's been hidden uh, that's been suppressed, especially um, uh, in 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 a lot of the organized religions. I don't know if you're aware that um, uh, some Christian scholars are coming forward now and and claiming, based on their research, that actually reincarnation was taken out of the Christian religion 700 years ago deliberately, in order to create this one life to live, and um, you know, and control the masses. Like either you do what we tell you, or you condemned to you know purgatory or hell which is you know uh i think is a is a, is really bad and i think you know considering the conditions of the world today and just recently what's happening um you know if people were enlightened on reincarnation they would think twice about going to war knowing that they were probably going to kill maybe kill a mother or a father or a sister or brother in their last life. So for me, um, I, I knew from an early age that, uh, you know, that I, I had previous existences. And yeah, um, you know, I was raised as a Muslim. Uh, when we moved to England, uh, I, you know, I went to the mosque, uh, read the Quran, did the Arabic prayers. Um, at the same time, uh, Katish, I was also going to Church of England uh, schools where I was getting Bible study, uh, you know, hymns, Christmas carols, which I really loved. And so I got the best of both Islam and Christianity. And um, I didn't see any particular difference between the, uh, the ideologies. They were, you know, they were given different times, different cultures, but the, but the spiritual principles of not only Islam and Christianity, but all the other religions are pretty much the same and so yeah i did have visions of a past life as, as a child and then um i remember at 16 i read the book autobiography of yogi by pramahansa yogananda and you know just brought chills up and down my spine it, it, i just felt so familiar 
uh, of the places that he was talking about in India and, and where he was and the experiences that he had. And, and it was then um, that I was, you know, that after that, that I met my own yogi master, an Englishman by the name of Dr. George King, and have been following him ever since for over 40 plus years. Mm. One of the things that I find is particularly interesting and helpful is that um, people like yourself and, and myself um, who have been exposed to and walked in the worlds of several religions really can understand that common tenets and the, the themes that run through um, and can actually look back and, and see where people um, uh, might get sent down a path, but we can look at it and say, well, because I have walked in the world and I have friends and family who are Muslim, but then I also went to, as you said, a, a, a school in the, the tradition of the, the Church of England. Um, and then, you know, I've been surrounded by yogis. I can see the, the cross section of humanity and for myself as well, um, and podcast listeners know I was, you know, brought up in a family uh, with the traditional Christian values, um, but not practicing. Then I spent, you know, a good decade exploring Buddhism. Yet, for example, in high school, when I went to exchange in Germany, um, I was placed with a Muslim family. So you can see, you know, uh, I think that uh, people who have messages to teach in the world are really are exposed to and interested in all of the religions to find the common threads and to, to find out what it is that we can um, share that can take away that tension between people with uh, people who believe in absolute truths and are not flexible on those absolute truths. So um, what I wanted to ask you about was um, with all of this multi-diverse um, understanding and your exposure to uh, a yogi in England, um, what what are the, some of the, the things that you'd like to share about the realizations that you've had about what we're all trying to achieve and the messages that we all need to understand that we might be glossing over? Um, well, you know, considering the situation in the world right now, you know, um, you know, uh, these endless wars, you know, this hatred between races and religions and, and an economic, archaic economic system, uh, people need to, you know, uh, like you uh, and other, other sensitive people, we're, we're aware that there is a, an awakening occurring uh, on, on planet Earth right now, primarily because of the influence of the Aquarian Age but also the fact that the mother earth herself is raising her vibrations and people, the, the thing that I, that I'm trying to uh, put out to, to your listeners is, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope. Um, but the thing is we have to take responsibility for our, for our, the situation that's been created on this planet and that aspect, you know, um, a great master once said that the greatest ignorance on this planet the greatest sin on this planet is ignorance and people are ignorant and that's why they act the way that they do. And coming back to reincarnation, you know, if people realized that, um, that they, you know, that, that they, there's no such thing as national pride or pride being born this race or this religion, because uh, we're part of all races and all religions and we come back life after life in you know, different bodies different races different religions different experiences and that's what we have to do in order to learn and eventually get enlightened and so you know um you know people are, 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 are stuck in maya they're stuck in in like you said you know rigid beliefs and um because of this awakening uh, a lot of people are opening themselves up even in the pandemic uh, people just realizing that there's more to life than just work and and family and whatever and so i think that's the biggest realization uh that's dawned up upon me that we are indeed one um there's no such thing as an american or an australian or a chinese and so this uh you know this futile bickering and bombing and bullets 
you know, it just creates, you know, and, and again, I think like the law of, the law of karma, action, reaction, and, and reincarnation, those are the things that need to be taught first thing in schools to the children that, that, that they are responsible for their actions and whatever they put out to get back. And, and, and the fact that, you know, uh, reincarnation uh, should be taught so that pe people are, are more aware that, um, you know, and be more tolerant of other races, of other religions. So I think, I think that the, 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 um, the wisdom of oneness, that we're all metaphysically connected, that, uh, you know, if I injure somebody, I injure everybody. And if I heal somebody, I heal everybody. And that realization has, has to come. Otherwise, we just c continue our regression and, and have to pay the consequences for it, unfortunately. Hmm. Now, uh, tell me, I agree with everything that you've just said there, but it's quite difficult for a lot of people to really embody and understand what you've just said in terms of, well, I'm not my skin color, I'm not my nationality, and I'm not my religion, because these are the key egoic identifiers, aren't they? We've learned to cling and grasp very rigidly to that because we've learned that uh, we have to define who I am yet we are not understanding the the actual understanding of I am in its proper proper sense. So yes. were there key experiences for you in your journey that really crystally clarified that? Like how did you actually understand in an embodied fashion rather than just a, this is a, a literal, uh, a written understanding that I've got from reading a book or an article or that I am everything that I have been all nationalities um, I have always been connected to the one true source. How how how's that come to pass for you? Well, it, it doesn't pinpoint to one particular experience. I think it pinpoints to a, no, a number of experiences uh, that eventually came gave that realization. And also, you know, I, I wrote in the book that you know, our intuition, our higher self, you know, that little voice, you know, of consciousness um, that, that can discriminate between what's right and what's wrong and what's truth and what's lies. And I, and I think uh, the more I dwell into myself and the more I got into my spiritual practices, the more I, this realization came and, 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 you know, the journey is continuous. So, you know, more realization uh, eventually will come. So it's not something that I suddenly became enlightened. Uh, I got a long way to go. Um, but I, I think the message is also that my, my yogi master received from the higher beings, the cosmic masters, um, you know, they address, the, whenever they, 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 these messages were, were sent, they address mankind as a whole they, they don't say you americans or you, you mm. chinese and so they they on a whole look up look upon mankind as a whole uh, we don't mm. and and their universal understanding and love uh, for mankind is something that we again we don't we don't have for each other um we're regarded in the solar system as a very savage warlike barbaric primitive race which unfortunately uh, we've regressed to but at the same time, they also know the potential within us that we are indeed, like you said, you know, sparks of sparks of the same creative uh, uh, divine source, uh, God or the absolute or whatever you want to call it. But they were all interconnected, not only with each other, but with nature, with the mo Mother Earth, with the sun, with the cosmos, with the solar system, and even with the higher beings. So there's no, um, so, so they realize our potential. They know that we can be the gods that we're supposed to be and, and not in this position that we are now where we've, we've involved ourselves that we just use our lower psychic centers. And it's time that, you know, we understand that we have higher centers, higher centers of inspiration. And the more that I, uh, I send the light out, the more that I do healing, the more, um, you know, um, that I use my highest senses in healing, uh, the more that realization dawns that I am indeed part of the whole and not, uh, not, not an individual. 
Yes. And there's a, a couple of uh, points that I wanted to bring out that you just spoke about. So your, your yogi master, Dr. King, he was able to communicate with um, interplanetary beings. Now, there's a couple of things that I'm really interested in there. One is, um, well, first of all, I think that a lot of people struggle to cope with the concept of reincarnation on Earth, right? But, you know, we are not just of Earth. We are from other places in time and space as well. And if you take the reincarnation system uh, as a universal and multiversal system, then we have been all beings of all planets, right? So tell me a little bit about, um, and you can, I, I, we can come back to this in a, a couple of ways. I'm wanting to he understand and let podcast listeners know about MALDEC. Um, and then I'd like to learn a little bit more about some of the wisdom that um, Dr. King experienced and that also you've experienced, if you have, since um, he has uh, transitioned with the knowledge that we are getting through from other um, interplanetary beings and, and, and what, what we can learn from them. Well, it, it took... Uh... It took my master over 10 years of intense yoga practice uh, before he was even considered to be contacted by the higher beings. So he had to, you know, he spent, uh, you know, eight to nine, eight to 10 hours a day uh, in yoga practice, uh, breathing exercises, mantra, uh, contemplation, meditation, to the point where he could raise his consciousness to these higher uh, psychic centers and uh, and when he was able to raise the kundalini up to the heart uh, the throat and the and the uh, uh, the Christ center uh, it was then that uh, he they could actually communicate with him so to me that showed that he had to reach that high state of being in order to communicate with these beings who not only are technically more advanced than us, but also millions of years spiritually advanced. And so, um, you know, he, he, they contacted him when he reached a certain level of, of, of consciousness. And, you know, as a yogi master, he was also able to consciously project from his body as an adept. And um, just like, you know, um he could look at my aura your aura and 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 the aura you know has information from your past and you and your present and can predict the future he also was able to read the aura of of the mother earth which people have referred to as the akashic records and the akashic records as an adept when you read these they don't lie not like the media and they have a complete picturization of the history um, of, of the planet. And by reading that in deep meditation, uh, he, he told us that indeed uh, 18 million years ago, we actually did inhabit a, a planet that was uh, orbiting between Mars and uh, Jupiter by the name of Maldek. And, you know, the Bible talks about Adam and Eve and the fall in the Garden of Eden, even though it's it's a fairy story, it has a, a story with a, a lot of uh, you know moral uh, implications. And on this planet, Dr. King said that you know robots took care of all menial tasks. We were highly technically advanced. We could control the weather. We had an abundance of food. Um, so we were actually very advanced beings living in utopia at one time. And then the you know um, some certain scientists. Uh, the disease, the lust for power, uh, the lust for control, and they invented an atomic bomb, which Dr. King said was 10,000 times more powerful than the hydrogen bomb that we use on, on Earth today and completely destroyed the planet Maldek. And all that's left of our home planet is the asteroid belt. And it was then that the Mother Earth was approached by the higher uh, beings and asked if she would hold up her evolution and allow this uh, race of atomic mutants to reincarnate upon her back, which she agreed and has held up her uh, evolution over 18 million years. And, you know, I, you know, Dr. King also talked about two advanced civilizations that rose and fell the, the civilization of 
the myriad that fell in an atomic war. And of course, the civilization of Atlantis uh, that fell also uh, in atomic war, the earth flipped on an axis and the great flood, you know, uh, occurred where um, Maldek, I mean, where Atlantis, you know, went under the water. And so again, it was very interesting that the cosmic masters contacted uh, Dr. King in the 50s and 60s, and there was a tremendous amount of uh, flying saucer activity uh, around the world because we, again, after, after the First and Second World War, we started again uh, exploding the atomic and hydrogen bombs. I think America exploded over a thousand, as did Russia. And the fallout should have killed all of us. Uh, scientists are still baffled why we're not dead. And I think there was an intervention uh, by these higher beings. They technically absorbed a lot of the atomic radiation and pretty much saved us. And so that was one aspect uh, of, uh, of their intervention. And, 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 and another aspect of some of the teachings that, that they've, that they've um, you know, sent through our master is again the reincarnation be taught by the elders of the religions or they will be replaced by a newer free thinking uh, generation and so um so two aspects that they were really concerned about was the proliferation of atomic uh um you know weapons again you know the earth we again were this is the fourth time that we may even destroy ourselves. And now it's got to the point where either we, we change or eventually uh, we will not be able to stay on this planet. We will be taken after death in the future to another planet to start our reincarnation cycle. So these are critical times. Uh, these are the end, end of the old order. You know, people talk about the end of days but i think it's a new beginning also for mankind and uh and so again it's up to us to roll up our spiritual socks and take action and take responsibility for ourselves mm. Mm, absolutely and um how how do you do this for yourself like um in terms of trying to help humanity mankind you said that you're a you're a, you're a healer and you you do your own healing practices um what can the everyday person do to um help the vibration of themselves and the planet well you know people talk about uh you know physical pollution which is atrocious but there's also a, a mental pollution mm. you know uh, thoughts are real um you know, you send you send a hate thought to somebody, it will pierce their aura, it will damage their aura and physical do physical damage. So, you know, we're all magicians in one way. We can use the same pranic energy to to destroy, or we can send, use the same pranic energy to heal. And you know, in the seventies, there was this oil crisis, and and people were talking about an energy crisis. And you know, Dr. King stood up, and what I liked about my master was that he made himself very unpopular because he would stand up on any platform and he would make a solemn oath before his creator that he would tell the truth. And he said, if you want to know about the truth, then tell the truth. And so he made himself very unpopular by saying that we're all connected, that we're, you know, that we're just as connected to communist China as, as, we, as you are to your children. People didn't like to hear that. And so... Um, you know, it, it, he said there's, you know, there's only one energy crisis on this planet, and that's a spiritual energy crisis. Spiritual energy is a very tangible, real energy. It, it, it vibrates on a different octave, just like electricity. Uh, we can't see electricity, but we see what electricity can do. And the call of action today uh, is to rise en masse in peace and channel this spiritual energy. I mean, we talk about, you know, physical starvation. Our souls are starved. We, you know, we are spiritual beings in, in physical bodies. It's not the other way around. And our higher senses are actually starved right now of this spiritual energy. So we are natural 
uh, radiators of this energy. We just have not been doing it on a regular basis. Uh, some people do, and excellent healers. I mean, uh, one prime example is, of course, the Master Jesus, who used this energy to raise the dead, you know, make the blind see. It's the same energy, universal energy, that we, that we all naturally can. Every man, woman, child, even animals and plants can... Uh, uh, you know, um, first of all, attract this energy and then radiate it. And so th that's the call of action today. Uh, the cosmic beings that my master contacted are, have, based on his experiences, and have a complete, um, you know, their their spacecraft or their technical uh, equipment that they use are, are completely in tune uh, with every vibrational sequence of every man, woman, child, uh, all live streams on this planet. They've been watching us for over 18 million years. And so another reason that they're here is to inspire us. And we can just think uh, into space and, and attract this energy, think of these beings, and they will send the energy to us on an individual or collective basis. And so that's the call of action is to raise our hands, send this energy out, uh, send it out from the two psychic senses, from the heart center, and send it out to the planet. And in regards to what I do, um, I've been, again, I've been given healing for over 40 years. I also belong to a group uh, that we meet pretty much regularly every day online uh, from 30, 40 different countries. And so if people don't know how to do, send this energy out, they can join us, it's for free. Uh, it's called uh, 12 Blessings, the 12 num being num numerical, 12blessings.org. And, and join us and be part of this, um, uh, this uh, mental revolution because, uh, you know, uh, the, the only way that we can change uh, the conditions on this earth, again, is not what's happening right now with mm. bombs and bullets. Uh, we have spiritual weapons, spiritual tools, uh, placed freely uh, to us and this energy from the cosmos the pranic energy that comes from the sun is unlimited it can never be diminished and so that that is the call of action and the thing is katish it's so simple that if you know it goes over people's head it's not complicated at all it's not rocket science you know all they're asking uh, is that regardless of race, color, creed, or religion, whatever belief that you have, you can you don't even have to believe in a in a in a higher being, and and you can be whoever you are. The call of action is for mankind in these days is to send out the light. This tangible, you can stand in front of a mirror, you can visualize this white light. It will re be reflected back to you. You'll feel tingling around your aura, around your fingers. Uh, it is real and. Unfortunately, because we're not psychic enough that we can see it, but we can definitely feel it. And that's the call of action, is that universal uh, transmit transmitting of that energy that is referred to as the power of L-O-V-E, the love energy that, that is so critical in these days. Mm, mm. And uh, to pick up on that point, I think that, you know, in spiritual, people who are spiritually aware and uh, are following paths where they want to help and learn and uh, I guess upskill and increase their vibration there's this tendency which I see which is I feel a little bit misled and I think this is exactly what you're saying in that you need like a 3d world certification to say I can now heal somebody because I studied this and I had I'm now a Let's, for example, and not trying to pick on a, a Reiki Master One or a, you know, yeah. but we contain it within. We don't need to go like it's great, always great to educate and learn from somebody else. But you don't need to be certified no, to no. access that. It's with you at all times. Yeah, you don't need a nap to to meditate and contact the the, the masters. And uh, you know, I, again, it's just like. riding a bicycle the more you do it the better you get and so you know at first you may not feel anything uh, but the more you do it the more your psychic senses will open up and, and you're right uh, anybody can anybody can do it um uh, it, it's it's uh, it's it's actually our, our right our you know uh, our in 
it, it, it's what we're supposed to be doing um, and it's not what we're doing and unfortunately because of this lack of spiritual energy is the reason why we are in the situation that we are and so um again you know the message of the book and the message to the listeners is of great hope and uh, you know again we regress we started war again um you know and and my master and the cosmic masters and prophets of old have talked about this new age that's coming to mother earth and so um and and no dictator no politician uh, nobody can stop this happening because mother earth has been told to raise her vibrations and so you know she will uh and and only those who can withstand these vibrations you know climate change you know the the ice caps melting the ionosphere uh depleting this is not all to do with carbon emissions this is a mother earth raising her vibrations and changing the seasons uh, it's been told that in the centuries to come there will be ambient weather there won't be uh, uh seasons like spring summer autumn uh, winter but an ambient uh, temperature and weather conditions that will be just absolutely beautiful and in the centuries to come, there will be no political system, no economic system. There will be no races, just open land and sea. And, uh, you know, we will inherit a beautiful world. But again, it's up to us. Uh, the, the, the answers have been given that uh, the more we radiate this power, and again, looking at the law of karma, that which you send out, you get back. So the more power you send out, the more you get back. And this is the safer way in the old days, you know, uh, there's, there's different ways of raising the power, which can be very dangerous unless it's, unless you're guided with a, uh, under the direction of a master. But this is the safest way to gain enlightenment in these days is to con continuously radiate that power so that the power of Kundalini, the higher, uh, um, psychic senses will rise naturally. It's a more longer way or a more safer way. And eventually, you know, as we reincarnate and continue this um, radiation of energy, eventually we will become adepts and masters to the point where we will re reach uh, our destiny, which is ascension, and eventually uh, break the, the cycle of reincarnation and move on to higher spheres. That's what Dr. King kept, and the cosmic masters kept saying, is that we did not come to planet Earth to suffer. This is our own fault. This is what we've created. Uh, the, the, he said, the only reason we're on this planet is to raise our consciousness, to raise the power of Kundalini uh, to higher centers and break away from the reincarnation cycle and, and, and enjoy, you know, happiness, states of bliss. That's what we're supposed, to, where we're supposed to be at, not the way that we've regressed right now. It's just, uh, it's very sad to see. Mm. And speaking to that, I mean, obviously there's a, a huge <clears throat> situation out there at the moment. And uh, when taking back to your original comment about focusing on the the mental situation, the mental constructs that we find ourselves in every day, would you recommend um, that people take their focus off the war situation and move to the inner love situation so that they vibrate that rather than vibrate the, the mental worry about war. Because as we know, what we focus on, we, we, we create more of. So if suddenly the whole planet is tuning into the vibration of what's happening in these warring um, countries um, that we're focusing in on an energy that we don't want to focus in. So if we spend more time within and spend more time connecting to that feeling of the love, then that's more productive and beneficial because I think lots of people feel helpless in a situation like this. Yeah, ab absolutely. You're, you're right on the ball with that. Um, you know, I, I, you know I, I do believe there's a, not only physical wars, but there's a, war, there's a war between the forces of light and the forces of darkness occurring on different dimensions that we're not even aware of. And, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, from my understanding, all wars have been planned. These, this is not something, they're not haphazardous. They're deliberately planned to cause as much destruction and suffering because I believe there are demonic forces in lower realms 
the feed on the energy of this, of suffering mankind. That's how they gain their power. And of course, you mentioned the ascended masters who are trying to stop this. So, um, you know, if we cooperate with the higher beings, the ascended masters and the cosmic masters, um, you know, a sensitive people, you know, I wake up in fear and anxiety every day because I can I can feel it, and you know we we as sensitive people we, we you know we can't really detach in in many ways from what's going on in the world. It does affect us, but you're absolutely right. You know um, another practice we can use is the violet flame from the Mother Earth, bringing up the this violet flame which was, again, a secret that was used in Atlantis 100,000 years ago. It was recently given uh, by the cosmic masters in, in the early 60s to mankind. And so we can protect ourselves from this psychic and mental energies that are causing a lot of fear by using that practice of the violet flame around us. It's a wonderful practice, uh, sending out the light. And they said to do it constantly not just, you know, wake up in the morning and do it for five minutes, but do it, try to do it constantly. Um, you know, if, if they talked about uh, a situation in another part of the galaxy where they approached this particular planet and they was going through the same kind of problems we're going, and they opened themselves up to, to the higher beings and the, and the energies and this, and they started sending out spiritual energy of healing and they said within 50 years, the whole planet was transformed. So, you know, if, if we got into this realization that we are our brother's keeper and send out the power, uh, we can transform uh, the planet. But again, it's up to us. And so, you know, you know, it's also the fact that cooperation and understanding between each other is very important you know, not competing against each other, that we're more superior or you're less than. And so, you know, that's another thing that they're talking about is cooperation between races and groups and whatever, and, and do whatever you do in your own way to send out the light. So um, these are very precarious times. And, uh, you know, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. Um, but at the same time, uh, you know, if we keep sending out the power, I think, our own conscious can, can say to us, you know, that we, at least we're doing something. We can't just sit there and say, oh, this is terrible. And we can't, we have the power now to change in whatever way it could be very minute or it could be massive. Uh, but we can, uh, you know, we, we don't have to look at this suffering that's occurring on, on, uh, you know, uh, around the world. We can make a difference. Uh, by sending out this light totally mm. agree with you mm. and you know as you said if you only if the only thing you do is make a difference to yourself then the difference in yourself impacts the everybody because you impact your family members you impact the person you sit next to on the bus you impact your employee like it's it's not selfish to work on yourself because when you vibrate at a higher level, when you are filled with more love, then when your thoughts are less at a denser level, if they've got a higher a positive feel towards your thoughts, then you cannot but affect the person simply through your energy field who's right beside you. Yeah, you can't project something you don't have. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's an exchange of energy between us in our conversation you know it's a good exchange of energy and uh you know exactly and if you know um if you keep reading eddie in that light you will have a certain magnetism as a healer yeah you affect everybody that you come across for worse or for, or for better absolutely mm. so i i think uh, i guess a lot of what I've been hearing lately is to bring it back to basics, to keep it simple, that it doesn't need to be complex because when you complicate things, you make it um, only available to those who uh, have reserved knowledge. And I think that's the path we've already been down, um, which is, you know, only higher people in ordained positions have the secrets, whereas what we're right. doing now is bringing down those, decon those constructs and saying, no, well, actually, you have the power you always have had the power you didn't need to go to a church or put on a robe or be uh, proclaimed as being somebody you don't have to connect with 
you know, higher beings because you are connected to everybody else. So start with yourself and then, you know, reach out. Um, people can reach out to you and, and learn some, some basics, but, you know, trust in yourself is, is the message that I'm getting that you can make a difference um, and that uh, it doesn't have to be struggle. You know, life's not about struggle. Well, the life is struggle in many ways. We mm. have to face, let's face it, we do go through very painful challenges, um, you know, and, and if we can rise above them, those painful challenges won't be given to us. And so, uh, you know, if we keep, you know, Dr. King said, you know, you can put money in a physical bank, but he said, if you put it in a spiritual bank and continue your spiritual uh, outpouring, he says, that'll pay dividends, uh, not only when you pass on, but when you come back, you'll have less frustration, you'll have more opportunities uh, to be enlightened, to go and give more service. And, you know, again, the call of action today's service, regardless of who you are, and uh, I think the, he's, the great religion now is service, is to, is to serve uh, everybody in, in many ways that you can. And uh, yeah, you're, yeah we, you don't have to be in any political, religious position. Uh, uh, everybody can go. And in one, you know, it's one thing to do, to do it individually. But like I say, if you join a group, uh, you can send out more power. That's why I joined the group. So that mm -hmm. on a collective way, 10 people coming together and sending out power is more, more powerful than just individually. And then you have the support of each other. So I think that's important that, you know, yeah, you can do it individually, but it's sometimes better to do it collectively as well with, with other people, like-minded people. Mm, and then it helps also with that feeling that a lot of people have had in the, over the last two years with the various um, situations in the world of being alone. So, you know, take yourself right. out of that feeling of aloneness and realize the connection with other groups because that helps you with the feeling of connectedness full stop. So is exactly. there... Is there something that you would like to leave us with? Perhaps, um, would you like to read the poem in the end of your book? Um, how would you like to, what thought would you like to leave podcast listeners before we go? Um, I, I think uh, the, the biggest thing that I want to let, let people know is that, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel, that we've never been left alone, that the higher beings love us unconditionally even though we don't love each other sometimes, but we are loved unconditionally by these high beings. They want us to join them, you know, and be part of the higher, the, the higher civilization, not like the dictators or the politicians that just want to keep us down. Uh, they want us to join them and be, become part of this cosmic family. And also, Katisha, I think we also need to... Um, uh, you know, it's, I think it's our responsibility for the younger generation, for the children that are coming up, uh, that we need to, you know, be responsible spiritual adults and, and not just think about ourselves and think about, you know, what kind of um, legacy when we die that we want to leave behind, that we want to be known as somebody who, who did try to help the world or somebody who was selfish and self-centered and only thought about themselves. And we owe it to these younger my nieces and nephews and, and, you know, the children of this earth uh, to leave them something that they can look forward to instead of this continual um, uh, madness that's occurring right now. Mm. Mm. Perfect. Okay. So I will just hold this back up again. This is Wajid's book, The Struggle for World Sanity, and you can get on Amazon. That's where I got my copy from. So um, there's lots more that we haven't talked about today, and I've purposely not gone into everything because there's some really interesting things there about your experiences um, that I'd like people to go back in and have a look from because a lot, I think that a lot of times people can listen to a podcast and think, oh, I've read that book now, but you haven't. There's lots of lots of um, experiences and plenty that weren't talked about that are even on the cover here um, that I want people to go in and open their minds to and um, they can contact you and ask, ask questions, yeah? So I will link in the yeah, show they notes. Can also, yeah, they can also go to my website, which is uh, wajidauthor.com, W-A-J-I-D-A-U-T-H-O-R.com as well, if they want more information. 
Perfect. So thank you again for firstly uh, leaving a message on the podcast recorder. We, I really appreciate it when people actually do reach out and, and leave us a tangible message because it just makes it more accessible to people because people think that they have these thoughts and then they think that nobody else has them or, or realisations that nobody else has them. So when somebody actually does record a message, it's like, oh, she's not making it up. Um, you know, somebody else is, is like her or believes like her or, wow, okay, I might... I might investigate that. So thank you for helping to uh, continue the, the conversation and to bring to people's awareness the fact that we are eternal. Um, and thank you for helping us with ideas and thoughts on how we can move forward and for coming on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. My pleasure, Fetish. Hopefully we'll do it again as well. Yeah, great. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. So.